Welcome to Double Fries No Slaw. It's AFC and NFC Championship Sunday. Richie, how you doing so far? Good, man. I I'm just told you I just uh, finalized my parlay. I got the uh, Chiefs outright and the 49ers outright. Um, I'd love to be wrong and see the Ravens and in, uh, in Lions, but I, I when I bet with my wallet, I don't go bet with my heart. So I'm um, really looking forward to it. We got about, what, 40 minutes, uh, 38 minutes still kickoff. Um, really excited. This is probably, CJ, and I'd love to get your take on this. This is one of my favorite sports days of the entire year is uh, championship weekend in the NFL. It's right up there with Masters Sunday, Final Four Saturday, um, the Kentucky Derby. It's just one of those great days, and I'm glad we're going early today to so we can just enjoy what I think will be a very good two uh, NFL championship games. Yeah, no, I agree. I like this day a lot. Um, fun note, uh, 18 years ago on Championship Sunday, Kobe went for 81. And so it was like the <laughs> only time in SportsCenter history that SportsCenter did not, back when SportsCenter was good, it was the only time in SportsCenter history that they did not lead off on that Monday morning with like championship. And they said it. They said like, I know you guys all want to see championship highlights, but after you went to bed, we got to show you this first. And What's so, it against the Raptors, I think. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, man, the NBA has been crazy. I know you guys didn't tune in for NBA talk, but <laughs> NBA has been crazy with guys scoring a lot. This, yeah, my goodness. Uh, week. So, um, all right, we'll get into it. Double fries, no slaw. Brought to you by Guthrie's in Tallahassee, eighteen eighteen West Tennessee Street, twenty five fifty North Monroe, and twenty eight seventy over there on Appalachia. I think that's right. So, either way, it's close to that. It's close to the address. It's over on Appalachian Parkway. Go get you some Guthrie's if you're in town, if you're in Tallahassee. All right, this might be a little bit quicker show. We'll run through some stuff, but Richie, let's start there. Last week, we got some comments. I don't know if you saw this, Harlan, or not, but we got some comments of people that were like mad about us talking about steak for the first like two or three <laughs> minutes of the show. They were like, it's three minutes in and you ain't got to any football and Listen, I don't know, man. If you know, I'm going to start we, a steak podcast. I was going to say we case. do a live show every week. Like it, yeah. I don't know. We we we're going to be human a little bit and talk a little bit about you know our lives. I'm sorry that we didn't start the football talk right away, but I did go to Council Oak that night. And I had a fantastic steak. So just in, in case anybody wanted to know about that, um, <laughs> AFC NFC championships. You talked about them a little bit, but um, do you who. Recap us again who who you who you want to win. So I, I bet against who I want to win. So I I bet the Chiefs and uh, the Forty ers But I would love to see the line. If you're an American, you don't want to see the Lions in the Super Bowl. I don't know what's wrong with you because th th that would be awesome to see Detroit in the Super Bowl. I did bet against them. Um, I also bet on the Chiefs. I, I'm not betting against Patrick Mahomes I, as much as I would love to see Lamar Jackson in the Super Bowl. I just, I need to see it happen first. Um, man, I, I'm so excited. Both these games should be amazing today. I think that seven and a half points uh, in the Niners Lions game is way too much. And I think the four and a half in the uh, um, Chiefs in, in uh, the Chiefs game is way too much as well. I'm, I took money line and I, I'm just excited, man. I, it's going to be a great day of football. Yeah. I, uh, I'm just cheering for Taylor Swift, so I I oh, want to see man. her. Taylor Swift Super, Super Bowl, Bowl is going to break the internet, yeah. Twitter X, Twitter, whatever you call it. Yeah. It's going it. to be insane. We need it. I know a lot of people will disagree with that, but that you know you cheer for who and what you want. So, <laughs> all right, Florida State big recruiting week this weekend. I've uh, had a couple of junior days in a row. Run through um, some key visitors this week, and then we'll move on. We won't spend a ton of time on this. You know, it's really early in the cycle, and so it's hard to it's hard to go so deep dive into just guys that were visiting on campus. But some high level names: five star offensive lineman Solomon Thomas, current commit. Yes. Uh, I think he was at Florida uh, at Florida last weekend, and so people are all freaked out about that. You know, I I've heard some rumors that they may get rid of one or both of those offensive line coaches. So I don't know, I, I'm not super worried about it. But if they did get a good offensive line coach in there, I might worry more. Uh, but I, I like where Atkins is and you certainly like playing from the front Florida state needs to hold on and, and keep a kid there that, um, you know, is a five-star, right? You know, you lost your top four targets on signing day, or you missed on your top four targets on signing day. And I like the class that Florida state had in 2024, but 
you you've got to you've got to take a step forward, right? And and we wanted faster and quicker progress, but when you really look at it and you you look at the fact that Florida State went from the 20s to now the top 10, well now you need to get close up into that top 5 range and uh, landing a kid like Solomon Thomas, who Florida State's going to have a very solid class this year. I'd be sh- shocked if they weren't uh, top 10. Landing a kid like Solomon Thomas and adding him to whatever else you package with your class is, is probably going to get you pretty near that uh, top five range. Uh, Derek Smith is a four-star wide receiver that was also on campus. Top 100 kid. I think Auburn's going to be really, really tough here from the state of Alabama, but you bring talented kids on campus and see kind of what can happen, what can shake out. Um, I don't have a lot of confidence that Florida State's able to pull him from Auburn, but we'll see. You know, it's a long season. If Auburn has a pretty down year and Florida State has an up one, maybe maybe if you get him back on campus a couple of times, you can kind of pull something off. But I, I think they'd probably be where I'd lean on that one. Elias Williams, a five-star tight end, UGA commit. We're going to talk about another five-star or former five-star tight end here in a minute. But people immediately obviously think of Landon Thomas with this one. I'm not sure that Florida State's as much of a lock to flip him, but... I will tell you, if you've been around the channel for a long time, we did a video on him last year around this time. It was like end of January, beginning of February, I think. I could be wrong on that. I think it might have been February, March. I don't know. It was early in the year, first quarter for sure, about Florida State's odds of flipping him as a five-star who was committed, who's been committed to Georgia for over a year. Um, people, again, will think of Thomas. I don't know if it's as sure of a thing that you flip him, but Florida State with a really good shot here. Kid's an absolute monster, 6'7", 235. Um, FSU leads on on threes RPM, which is not perfect by any means, but they do a fairly good job. Um, I mean, if you had to ask me today, I, I like where this the Knowles stand to, to take another uh, five-star tight end away from Georgia. I'm sure he'll finish as a four-star. Um, not to get too far ahead of myself, we'll talk about that in just a minute. But uh, Elias Williams, Richie, if Florida State could flip that one, it would be a pretty big deal. Yeah, man, you, you just mentioned Landon Thomas, um, who was, you know, arguably the number one tight end in the country who flipped from Georgia to Florida State, despite Brock Bowers and, and everything he did at Georgia. That That's amazing. Um, yeah, man, if we can get Williams here, that, that, that'd be huge. And to, to your point, I'm not overly confident right now, but we're definitely, you know, in the conversation. And that's where you want to be. You want to be in the conversation for these five star players, especially you know, not necessarily the offensive line, but in the trenches, so to speak. Uh, man, he is a phenomenal player, and I think he's a guy if Florida State can flip him. That That is a statement in itself, and I think Florida State has clearly made their, their intentions known. They are fully committed to football right now. Uh, Ingram Smith, shout out the battle's end. Go donate to them if you haven't. It, there's a lot of good things going on at Florida State, and if you can get Elias Williams, that, that's just uh, one more – you know, cherry on top right now. Yeah, I did a video last year, Richie, on uh, we'll talk about one more commit and then we'll move on from this. But I did a video last year when Florida State was in it for like a lot of five stars on how bro, I'm so embarrassed by this and I'm probably gonna do it again this year. So blame TJ, I guess. But actually, you know, blame the staff. Um, I did a video on how many five stars Florida State could land. And I, I listed basically all the guys who they had committed that were five stars. I listed all the guys who were committed and close to being a five star, like could rise up. And then I listed all the guys that they were like in it for. And uh, man, there were like 10 guys on that list, 10 or 11. And uh, Landon Thomas was one of them. Cam Davis was one. Uh, Charles Lester was one at the time uh, who we felt good about, but he hadn't committed yet. Um, uh, offensive line t- uh, prospect. Jonathan Daniels was one. He was a five-star and on three at that time. Uh, Luke was on there. He was a four-star, but he finished, I think, rated like the number 33 player overall. So like literally like first line five star, the, yeah. you know, like one spot away. Uh, but anyway, uh, Jamari Howard was on that list. He finished like around the top 50, but didn't get all the way up to five-star. And then obviously you had KJ Bolden, Jeremiah Smith, Cam Coleman, others that Florida State was, you know, in it for. Um, I didn't even have Armando Blunt in there or LJ McCray, I don't think, but LJ wasn't a five star at the time when I did the video. But anyway, all that said, I had us getting like five or six, you know, five stars. And I will say we landed like still like five of those guys, you know, Jamari Howard and, and Luke Cromenhawk and Cam and Jonathan Daniels and Landon Thomas. So we still did fairly well, you know, for the video, but 
we ended with zero five stars. This year, Florida State needs to pull in a couple, right? You, you need to, whether it be you, you hold on to Solomon Thomas, you, you flip Elias Williams, you, you pick up somebody else um, that's kind of in that range, you need to do a little bit better there. But yeah, maybe don't make videos on, on how many five stars you're going to land. I'm surprised that no rivals went out and like, I reshare that. Like they like to, you know, troll when you mess something up. Uh, how, how did you put it out there? They're they're going to. Oh yeah, I mean, that's all right. They, you know, the, the way YouTube works, I, I'm more than happy with people sharing that. Um, Four star <laughs> linebacker Jake Caleb Falk, Auburn commit, top 150 ish kid on the on three industry. Um, I, at the end of the day, this is the brother of Keldrick Falk who flipped from you on signing day, <laughs> like, you know, a couple of years ago. Um, I don't have super high hopes here, but I will say. It is encouraging to start to get four- and five-star linebacker talent back on campus in Tallahassee. We've talked a lot about linebacker recruiting. I won't belabor that point, but, um, you know, people were mad at Randy Shannon on signing day because of, you know, how signing day went, and I really thought that was displaced anger for as much as I've, you know, said that linebacker recruiting needs to get better uh, because we didn't whiff on anybody last year on signing day at the linebacker position because we weren't in it for anybody uh, you know, at the linebacker position last year on signing day, like, not on Randy. Well, I, I'm not upset on signing day about that happening because I, I had no, I was upset all year about that happening. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> fair, Randy fair. did not mess up on signing day. It'd be like being mad at the bucks for something that happens today. I'm mad at the bucks for last week. Right. Like, I mean, you know, a little, <laughs> I guess a little bit different, but yeah, like we, we didn't whiff on anybody because we just weren't in it for anybody. And so and this year, problem. at least you're getting some of that talent to campus. You're, taking steps in the right direction. I don't feel good about pulling a current Auburn commit away from the place where his brother is currently balling out and going nuts. But yeah, it's not happening. At least you have Let's a kid on campus, right? It's you, not happening. <laughs> you're getting better kids on campus. It's not, I won't even say it. I won't even, it's not the, 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 the things that the, the, the commits that we've, uh, or the linebackers that we've seen traditionally, uh, Randy get to visit. So, a step in the right direction. They got to visit first before you can get them. So hopefully we can kind of pull in more four and five stars uh, at that position on campus. So we'll see. Fingers crossed for linebacker recruiting. Um, all right. Clip this one, Harlan. Speaking of recruiting, Brandon Thomas this week dropped a little over 100 spots. Harlan, I don't know if you have that first picture or not that you can throw up, but dropped a little over 100 spots over a three-week period, Richie, where – no games were played. He didn't remeasure and come out smaller. He didn't lose a bunch of weight. His hand size didn't go down. Dropped 100 spots over the last two updates in the 247 rankings, which was the highest drop that I could find. I didn't go down in like the seven and 800s to look for kids who had dropped that much. Um, listen, I tweeted this i'm not necessarily one of those guys that's like i'm a rankings bias guy and everybody hates the Knowles. i know that 247 has been high on um some Knowles in the past they were high on a lot of our kids in the 23 class but then harlan showed that other picture i asked about it i asked their rankings guy and this was the answer that we got back from Andrew Ivins. landon thomas didn't end up making it to one of the all-star games but there were other tight ends who did make it we're always going to value prospects with the most information available. We were waiting and waiting to get verified, plus another live verified information like height, weight, all that stuff, plus other live another live exposure on Thomas and thought we would see him in December and January, but didn't. We're also placing a premium on tight ends with multi-sport backgrounds. Richie, before we go too far down the conspiracy Don't get me started. theory here, we're going to do it, though. This, I'll say, this is not like the guys at Knowles 247 do a phenomenal job. This has their Landon Thomas's ranking has nothing to do with those guys, right? Yeah. Like Brendan and, and Chris and Zach and all those guys do a great job, Dane and, and others. They have nothing to do with this. So let's preface everything by saying that. Uh, secondly, you knew Landon Thomas wasn't a multi sport athlete when you had him rated as the number one tight end of the country. So using that now as justification to drop him, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. If that's if if your priorities change and your focus change, that's fine. Uh, but then say that. Don't say like, well, he's not a multi-sport athlete, so we dropped him because he he wasn't four months ago when he was the number one tight in the country. And then lastly, he didn't make that all-star game that happened just a week or so before the rankings. 
that they would like to have seen him at, but he was re- enrolled in, in Florida State. Like, he was already on campus. Yeah. Like So, anyway, I'm not here to say that 247 or all three or any of these places hate the Knowles. That's not – I know that when you, when you start to say that, you've got – national 247 personalities that are also in this FSU market that just go to the defense of 247. Oh, our rankings are better than this and that. I'm not attacking the entire process, the entire system. I do think it's funny that this kid drops 100 spots without playing a game, without anything happening. So, I don't know. Richie, I'll leave it open to you. Yeah, I don't know. It's, you know, it's ridiculous in the fact that this is how we are ranking kids, right? Like, it's just comical to me that the fact that you would drop a kid a hundred spots and, you know, go from the number one tight end to the number 11 tight end in the country, uh, you know, overnight basically because he didn't show up to an all-star game. Like he could have played an all-star game if he wanted to, but to your point, TJ, no, he enrolled at Florida state. He is in college. It's just crazy to me that, that this is where we are. Um, I'm not going to get too upset about it because it, it is what it is. But at the same point, it's like, really, are we, is this how we're doing this right now? Because it, it doesn't make any sense to me personally, because I, I don't know how you can have on the next to final rankings, have him as the number one tight end in the country. And then in the final rankings a week later, after all-star games, there weren't 10 tight ends that showed up for these all-star games. He's number 11 now. It makes no sense. He went from like borderline five star to one ninety eight in the country. No, that does not make any sense. Um, it, it's interesting, and to your point, it doesn't say anything about you know Chrisney or or Zach or or Brendan or any of those guys. You know they don't have any say in in these national rankings. So guys, please do not get upset at them. But I don't know, man. It's just wild to me. The way it happened, but I, I'm I'm still very excited to have Landon Thomas at, at Florida State, and I think he's going to have a hell of a career as a Seminole. Yeah, I agree. Again, I don't necessarily think that it is, and we'll get to that super chat after this segment. Thank you, Josh. Um, I don't think it's like conspiracy stuff. You know, the 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 ratings are really good at projecting. You know where guys are going to end up. In the draft, they talk about it all the time. Like five stars typically translate to first rounders, four stars typically day two guys, second and third round, and then three stars kind of fill out the rest of the draft. They've done a good job of predicting that. But again, I think you're kind of losing the plot a little bit when you go so far into hey, this kid didn't show up for this camp, so we dropped a hundred <laughs> spots. A hundred spots is insane. Um, you know, and, and I'm a homer, right? And so I'm going to fight for the kids that signed with FSU. I'm going to fight for the kids that want to be part of this Cheers class, Joel. this university. Yeah, Joel, we'll get to yours in just a second too, but sorry about that. Uh, sorry about that, Josh, your, your shine got taken a little bit, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's tough for me to see a kid drop that much for not attending a camp, um, is, is tough. <laughs> it's unfortunate. I really like Landon Thomas. I think he's going to be really good for the Knowles. Um, I mean, I, does it matter at the end of the day? No. I'll, I mean, I'll be honest, it doesn't. Uh, just due to the fact that I mean, he's a Noel now and Florida State. I mean, I'll tell you this. Florida State liked him a lot, and I trust Mike Norvell. And Kirby Smart liked him a lot. And guess what? I trust Kirby Smart's evals a lot, too. So if Kirby Smart wanted him and Mike Norvell wanted him, I don't really care what camp he didn't go to. I guess that's the way I'll say it. But. It's not fair to the kids because these kids can tell you yeah. like, oh, I don't care. I, it doesn't matter to me. They do, right? They, no kid wants to get dropped over 100 spots. So I'll, I'll say that. Like that kind of sucks for him. So, all right, let's give some love. All right, let's give Josh a little love. Let's give Josh a little first, yeah. Yeah, Josh, give me that leaderboard. The ranking conspiracy is real. They punished the kid for going to a school early and actually getting better developed. Hey, I mean, I, don't, I, I won't disagree, Josh. Yeah. I, that's your take. I'm with it. Can we put Josh up on the bottom for like, Half a sec, and then and then we'll write uh, Joel's name. Joel, uh, Josh is ready. Joel, man. what is up with Joel? Joel, Joel came in and woo, he came in hot. Work. Yeah, Joel. Nobody giving us credit will make a natty that much sweeter. Man, I'm with it. Let's play some music for Joel or sound or something. Yeah. Touchdown, Florida State! Touchdown, FSU! Joel, Josh, thank you guys for the support. In both the ways that you guys did, bro. He, yeah, 
Josh, he, he smacked you down on that one. But, Joel, we appreciate the love for sure. A uh, little bit different time today that we're going, so I appreciate you guys that have tuned in. If you're yeah, watching this on the replay, um, appreciate that as well. Let's keep rolling, though. Let's give some love to Guardian Gold. GuardianGold.com. Use code NOSLAW. I saw they re-upped their uh, white, white, hoodies. Uh, white hoodies yes. with the uh, tomahawk. I, but I'll, I got bad news for you. If you're large or extra large, they're already out again. So hopefully you're either, <laughs> uh, a, a, you know, got some got some girth to you or uh, or a, a little guy, like a medium or a small. So uh, those are sick. So GuardianGold.com, N-O-S-L-A-W at checkout, 15% off. Richie, a lot of people complain about the Doak renovations. We'll, we'll kind of go rapid fire here, but a lot of people complain about the Doak renovations. Um, it does look like, you know, um, A.D. Alford's tweeting, pardon our dust all the time. People are, but, but I think, okay, where do you lie on this, right? I don't even know if we've really talked about it a ton. I get not wanting Doak to not be, you know, 84,000 or whatever the number was, but are you, what are your thoughts there? I, I I'm, I'm fine with it. I, I think this season is, is going to, it's going to be odd, you know, cause we're probably going to have what 48,000 fans, um, every game. And, and when, especially in the year when you host Florida and Clemson, that, that really does kind of suck. But at the same time, you know, we, we know why it's happening. We know what's going on. We know the renovations. It, it's going to be, you know, for the benefit long term, but short term, it, it's going to suck, man. It really is. It's, you know, you're going to host Clemson this year in a game where, where we'll talk about the schedule a little bit. That could be a potentially top 10 game. And you might have less than 50,000 fans at the game. Like, like that sucks. That part of it definitely does. But I, I'd like the vision. You know, if you can see the vision of what Florida State's doing, what Mike Lawford um, and President McCollum and everyone that, that has the vision of what Florida State, what Doe Campbell Stadium is going to be. I think that's a great thing. But this year, it's going to suck, man. It really is. Um, you know, I, we'll talk about Ireland in a little bit. That's going to be a that's going to be a blast. But you know, home games at Doke this year just are. It's going to be one year out of seventy years that that, that is just not what you would want it to be, what you would expect it to be, what it has been. You know, everybody remembers the the games at Doak, man, that, that Oklahoma game in, in 2011 and, you know, other games along the ways, whether it be a Miami, a Florida, a Clemson game, whatever it is, it, it's, it's going to suck this year, but it's going to be for the benefit of the future because I cannot wait to see what the new Doak will look like. And quite frankly, you know, there's a lot of people, myself included, who would rather sit on my couch in my air conditioning, watch the game on my 75, 80 inch TV <laughs> and not have to travel four hours and pay a thousand dollars for a hotel for two nights and all the expenses that it cost, And that's a problem that really, that's the problem that needs to be fixed. And I don't know if it can or if it will, but yeah whatever it takes to attract more people to Tallahassee. And I think this will, this year is going to suck, but next year it's going to be awesome. Yeah. And hopefully that's the first year in the big 10. So yeah. Um, could, could really, or sec either one could, could really be fun. So, um, all right. You, you mentioned Ireland, got our Ireland Airbnb booked up and ready to yeah. go. Um, are you nervous? Like, what are you most nervous about with that game? Georgia tech, a team that's kind of on the upswing, um, Florida State's trying out a, a new quarterback. Like this isn't Jordan Travis coming back, where you have a lot of confidence. Now I think DJ is going to be really good, but it is game one. And then you're also playing. I mean, Georgia Tech has to travel too. Like it's not just them, but you're also playing a long way away. And so, are you are you worried at all? Um, you know, I think the spread right now is twelve and a half. Florida State favored. Um, so nearly two touchdowns. I, listen, I respect the hell out of Brent key. I think he is a phenomenal coach. I just don't think Georgia Tech has a players man to man to match up with Florida state when they, um, you know, touchdown in Ireland in Dublin. I, I just don't see it. Um, I, I do think it's a game Florida state could lose if they go out there and play poorly. That's absolutely a game we could lose TJ, but I, I do think Florida state is, Definitely more well fitted to win this game. I, I, I'm very confident in us. Um, I would not be spending the money we're spending <laughs> to go to Ireland if I thought we were going to lose this game. But I, I'm really excited. Um, but again, Brent Key, Georgia Tech. I think he's got that program on 
a good trajectory. You know, if the ACC falls apart, that would suck because, again, Georgia Tech at that point, nobody's in you know lining up to get Georgia Tech into the Big Big Ten or the SEC. They're they're just not. They already have Georgia and Athens and the Big Ten. Why would they want Georgia Tech? That, that would make no sense. Um, I hate to see that, but yeah, I think Brent Key and Georgia Tech, they're an up and coming program. You know, they've been around a while, obviously, but I, I really like his vision and what he's got going on in, in Atlanta. But I, I think Florida State should win that game fairly easily. I'm more worried about where am I going to play golf that week uh, in Scotland, probably uh, before I head back to Dublin to meet up with you and, and the boys. Pretty, uh, pretty tough. Uh, <laughs> you're such an a hole. <laughs> pretty tough life you got there. Um, all right, let's do this. Clip this one, Harlan. All right at twenty five thirty eight. Um, let's go quick, rapid fire schedule wins and losses. All right, so we just did Georgia Tech, um, but quick recap. Yeah, there's a lot that could potentially go wrong with Georgia Tech. There's a lot going on, but. No excuses. If you're a if you're a if you're a ten point favorite, um, you got to win. You yeah. should win this game. So one and zero to start the year. Come home, BC. Cast- I mean, this was a game that everybody <laughs> liked to point to. Again, I'm not trying to overhype a schedule that I think you should have success against. But BC, uh, you come home. You do get the extra day because it's on Monday night, but it is a smaller dope crowd. Unfortunately. Um, I'm going to have a lot of people kind of hung over from Ireland. A lot of Guinness, I'm sure, will be flowing. Will the team be hung over from whatever happens in Ireland? Castellanos went off last year, and uh, they, they played you to a two-point game at their own stadium. Obviously, there was some some flu and stuff that went on, but how concerned are you with BC, and, and who wins? Not very. Uh, Castellanos did not look good the rest of the year. Um, Florida State wins that game. I uh, even if Castellanos plays like he did last year, he won't. Uh, spoiler: He there's zero chance he plays like that again. Um, now, nah, Florida State wins that game. I think fairly comfortably. I think by ten to seventeen points, Florida State wins that one. All right, I've got us winning two to to get to two and zero. Oh. Um, week three, actually, we've got the so then then the bye week, right? The first so, of three, yeah. Um, I like it. I like the bye week there. Um, Next one. Is that Cal next week? No, Memphis. Memphis next. So Mike Norvell's old team. Nobody on that team, though, that he coached, I wouldn't think, right? This is your five. Yeah, not not yeah. at this point. Maybe a COVID ha- holdover? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, <laughs> Memphis comes in. Worried about them at all? What thoughts there? That's a win. Yeah. I've got this one. I tried to hype that one up, but couldn't. <laughs> uh, Cal the next week. That's a win. Yeah. 4-0. I would be shocked uh, if, if we were not 4-0. To start the year, yeah, but then becomes the then comes a, a a tougher one, I think, at SMU the very next week with Clemson the week ahead. I know that a lot of people saw SMU get blown out by BC in the bowl game where SMU's quarterback didn't play. I think SMU will be better. They were a good team this year. What's your? Uh, are you more worried about this game than any of the other to start the year, like that we've talked about so far? Not like on the whole schedule. I have this as a loss. Oh, wow. I just think it's a trap game. I think Lashley is a phenomenal coach. You know, Fuller's had trouble with Lashley in the past. I I think we dropped this game. Okay. I've got us winning. I've got us going on the road and staying focused and winning, but I do think it's the closest game so far. Of the, of the first five, I think it's the closest. I think Florida State finds a way to win. I think the trenches are the difference, and they find a way to win. So I'm 5-0. I'm and oh, Richie's 4-1. and one, But... Is it worth it, right? Was looking ahead worth it because you beat Clemson the next week, Richie? Yes, we do beat Clemson. We make it two in a row in Doak. Again, I wish th- this year was a, a true, you know, 70 plus thousand fans at the stadium. It, it will be, a, you know, between 40 and 50,000 fans. But man, I, I, I do think Florida State beats Clemson second year in a row and reclaims their title as the king of the ACC. I, I think that's where we're going. Florida State beats Clemson. It'll be close. It'll be a tough game, but Florida State wins. So this early, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna flip flop with you. I'll say this is the loss. I don't want to. I I I I want to, and I'll probably pick us as we get a little closer to the season. I just need to see it in spring. Like there's just too many question marks for me 
at this point. Like I need to see and hear how DJ looks um, as we go through the spring. Not that that's the end all be all, but um, yeah, I just think Clemson has a little more coming back at this point. I, you know, really, really good game last year. Um, Florida State was fortunate to win it. Um, I think it'll be another close one, and I think the Knolls drop a close one to Clemson. Um, sorry, I know you guys wanted me to pick us to go twelve and zero, but I just I wanted to as well. I do think we uh, coming off the bye week though, Friday night against Duke. I do think we get the win there. Yeah, that's a I win. We beat that's a win. All right, so tougher one though. The next week we stay on the road and we take on Miami. We get the extra day to prepare for Miami. Miami plays Louisville the week before on the road. Obviously, it's down there in Doak South, so it'll be a 50-50 split crowd, if not maybe slightly favor FSU. I think Miami will be riding a lot of momentum here. Their beginning of their schedule sucks, and I think they're going to have a lot of wins, even if they lose to Louisville the week before. Um, thoughts on Miami, Richie? People don't want to hear this. Miami is going to be good next year. They, they will be a top 15 team in the country, in my opinion. Um, you know, the, the fact that they, they finally got their quarterback, which shocked all of us, I think. Um, Miami is going to be good. But I do think, you know, home field advantage is not necessarily a thing. It, it could be if they get the momentum going their way in the game. I think Florida State wins that game. I, I, I'm i taking the Knowles. I, I think Florida State wins that. I have the Knowles as well. I think it's going to be a good game. I think it'll be a really close game. I trust Mike Norvell um, as opposed to Mario Cristobal as coach. Yeah. Um, I think Uyungle will be good. I think he'll play well. I think he'll have things figured out that late in the year. Um, I, I still like Florida state at some other positions much more than Miami. I, I don't really know what Miami has at wide receiver. Um, so yeah, I, I, or running back. I, so I, I think Florida state's in a better position to go out and get this win. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I've, I've got us getting that one against the hurricanes. Um, then North Carolina back in Doak feels like we hadn't been there for a long time since the Clemson game, obviously, but a bye week in there as well. So, uh, North Carolina at home. Not, I don't have a ton of concern here. I, I think we win this one. Yeah, Mac Brown zero and ten against Florida State. Make it zero and eleven. It'll be. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, and then comes the big one. Yeah. Uh, going to Notre Dame. I'll just. I'll. I'll go first on this one. So I've made you go first a lot. I, I've got this as another loss. Uh, and I think it could be really close. I need to see kind of how Riley Leonard plays in this. But you know, I, I've got us dropping this one. Yeah, I. I I do too, uh, I, and I don't want to. I don't want to say that I hate. Like you know, we're we're a positive show for the most part, but man, th that's a tough game, especially in November. It's going to be cold. You know, I went up there when Willie Taggart was the coach. It was like twenty two degrees at kickoff. Just the most miserable game I've ever attended in my life. My, maybe outside of the twenty ten ACC championship when it was thirty degrees and raining against Virginia Tech in Charlotte. Um, I, I just. I'm a huge Marcus Freeman fan. I just think they're going to beat us in that game, and I hope I'm wrong. Yeah. No, I, I don't know. You know, I, I'm about to predict this to go 10-2, and two, so I don't feel that bad. So we beat Charleston Southern, and then it comes down to Florida. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to beat the shit out of Florida. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I think we do, too. I I, I really like us against Florida um, to take the record to 10-2. and two. Um, The big question is going to be, and this could be a video all by itself. I'm not going to do it, I don't think. Uh do we get into the championship at seven and one? Either way, I don't think it matters. If you get in the championship, you win it, you're in, obviously. Yep. Ten and two, getting left out, and your only losses are to Notre Dame and Clemson, who I would assume Clemson is in the championship at that point. Uh, I think you make the playoff at ten and two. I know so we're I, hard. I know that we're jaded from last year, but uh, if we get in, you got a chance to win, maybe a rematch against Clemson. If you don't, I think you you make the playoff either way. Yes, I have us a seven and one in conference play because the Notre Dame loss doesn't count. Right, that it, it, it doesn't matter, and uh, you know I have losing the SMU, whatever, but I have us beating Clemson, so I I think we're in a really good spot, and we're gonna go to Charlotte, and if you win in Charlotte again like we did this past year, yeah, you're in the College Football Playoff. There, there's they, they cannot leave you out at this point. They have to take you. So I have Florida State ten and two in the College Football Playoff, and. Anything can happen from there, man. I'm excited. This uh, it's been a while since I've been this excited about Florida State football and the season that could be. But I, I do think that 2024 Florida State will be a college football playoff team. I like it. I like it. Yeah, I've got us in the playoff too. Might be sneaking in there late, um, but 
I think you, you've got a chance to win every game. And so we'll see if they do. All right, last thing, and we'll get out of here. Harlan, let's uh, let's timestamp this one, and then we'll go. Uh, throw that picture up on the screen, Harlan. Mike Norvell listed as one of the most likely coaches to win a national championship that hasn't won one yet, right? Like, so the only two coaches in college football right now that have national championships are Dabo Sweeney and... Is there Kirby Smart. Kirby Smart. Yeah, you're right. I was thinking Harbaugh's gone. Saban's gone. Everybody's <laughs> gone. Um, Ryan Day on there. Kalen DeBoer, Marcus Freeman, Brian Kelly, Dan Lanning, Mike Norvell, Lincoln Riley, Steve Sarkeesian. All um, in alphabetical order. So that's not necessarily the um, like the ranking or anything like that. But coaches you think could win a national championship in the near future. This was put out by Jesse Simonton of On3. Richie, just general thoughts on this, and then we'll kind of break it down and get out of here. Ryan Day, yes. I think he's probably going to win a national title. Uh, DeBoer, no. Uh, I, I I think they're just, that's the Alabama logo there. It yeah. should just say, it should just be a picture of, uh, what's the what's the elephant's name? It should just be the elephant. Ow, yeah. Yeah. Ow. I don't, I agree with you. Something good online. Freeman, big fan, no. Brian Kelly, hell no. Uh, Dan Lanning, probably not. Lincoln Riley, no, until he gets a defensive coordinator. And Sark, no. So, yeah, I think, I really do think Mike Norvell is probably second next to Ryan Day because I do think Ryan Day is going to win a national title in the near future. Yeah, I, I, I'm I, out on Lincoln Riley. I don't think he should be in there. I think if I had to rank them, I'd have Ryan Day first, Mike Norvell second. I'd probably have... Brian Kelly and then Steve Sarkeesian is probably how I do it. Like, I don't trust Brian hot. Kelly at all. I just don't. I don't either. But I mean, I, they won with Ed Orgeron. So like, I'm yeah, like, true. They, they could talent. If you way. recruit the Louisiana talent, yeah, you should yeah, win yeah. one. And that's yeah. where I'm at with Sarkeesian too. Like just a ton of talent at Texas. Like, you know, they got in this year. They were close. Like, I don't know. But yeah, like Marcus Freeman, no way. Dan Lanning, maybe. No, 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 think. no. I, the fact no. that he's in the Big Ten now it makes it easier than no even the then I think that makes it harder. <laughs> yeah, tough tough to see that one going down. Um, all right, a couple of names that aren't on there: Mario Jimbo Cristobal and, and Billy Napier. <laughs> <laughs> Does it surprise you at all that those guys aren't on there? No, I, I think Mario has a chance to stick around. Um, Billy's going to be fired this year let's be honest that schedule is brutal um but mario might stick around he recruits mario recruits like a mf or man he does he really does he's a phenomenal recruiter and he's always going to have a talented roster uh, is he going to be the ron zook of miami where they just he lets them put a stacked roster and the next guy is who you need to worry about because you don't need to worry about mark crystal you need to worry about the next guy because whoever comes in is going to have a loaded roster. Um, but man, Florida, no, not, not at all. <laughs> yeah, the Florida part, kind of a joke. I will tell you, the one thing that would kind of go in Crystal Ball's favor would be the fact that you, obviously, if you're winning a championship, you don't have to ever take a knee. Um, so you, <laughs> you, should, you should be in a little bit better spot there. So, okay, we took a lot of heat for what Mike looked like in, in his first two years. And then we've seen what Napier's looked like and then what uh, Crystal Ball's looked like. I believe Mike lost 13 games his first two years. Yeah. Um, that's how many Crystal Ball lost. Uh, and that's how many Napier lost. I'm sorry, no, no, no. Napier lost uh, 14. Crystal Ball lost 13. But are so, they going to go undefeated this year? yeah. Pro I mean, well, they they need to get to ten and three, which I think Cristobal actually could get he, close he, to. Yeah, he will. He will. But Napier probably not getting to ten. No, no chance. <laughs> no chance at all. Uh the yearly ceiling for Mike Norvell, I think we'll find out this year. Uh, you know, you lose Benson, Wilson, Keon, Travis, Fabo Fisk, Deloge, Tatum, Bethune, Jarring Jones, Renato Green, Akeem Dent, and others. Um, but Despite all that, Florida State still favored to win the ACC and to make the playoff. Like with a bunch of unproven's, right? Like that's all Mike yeah. Norvell that they're 
kind of betting on. So I don't know. Makes you feel better about the long term, I would assume. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I I think Mike Norvell is the right guy. There's the reason we're now paying him $10 million a year moving forward. And, you know, he, he's showing, you know, he, he can build this roster through the portal. And as he continues to, to show what he can do on the field, it's going to only get better in the high school recruiting ranks. And that's where you need to be elite. And I think he can get there. And I'm just super excited about where Florida State is. Mike Norvell, Michael Alford, man, I could not be more confident in what we have in our leadership of our program right now. Yeah, it, it definitely is a better spot than we have been in, than what we've seen in the past. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I think the fact that other, it, it, again, it kind of shocks me that DeBoer's on there and, and maybe some other guys. I mean, there's a lot of logo watching, it feels like, on that, yeah. uh, on that paper. But yeah, I mean, there's, like I said, there's a couple of logos that are certainly missing. But it, uh, it does encourage me that that's that the program is back to being thought of in that way, right? Because for a long time the program was a joke. For a long time it was, hey, you know, you're you're just there, Florida State. Now it certainly seems like the program is thought of in a better light. And um, you know, I, I don't know if the team is talented enough, Richie, to to win a championship this year, but I do know that there there's not like a hey, we're gonna take this year off. And no. uh, just, you know, uh, we'll go get them in 2025. Maybe Luke will lead us or this will happen or that'll happen. It's like, hey, no, we're going to reload and we're going to give it everything we can and try and go out and win and make the playoff. And then from there, see what happens. And, yeah, it certainly would not be easy to go win three games in that playoff. But, um, you know, we'll see. We'll kind of see what happens and, and kind of figure that out once we get to it. So, Richie, any shout outs or anything today before we get out of here? Um, yeah, shout out the wife, uh, put a nice birthday weekend together for me. I uh, had a great time and, uh, you know, ah, man, I wish I could have given a shout out to the Florida state basketball team. Uh, they, they played a hell of a game against North Carolina and, you know, they, they had a chance to win. It, it was unfortunate that they kind of let things slip away from them late. That, that, that sucks for me. Cause I was so excited about that game and, and thought that team could win it out. But um, shout out Coach Ham because he, he's not going out, you know, the way I personally thought he might have. You know, he's going out on his terms. And, you know, I think, Florida, listen, this Florida State team is not going to make the NCAA tournament most likely, but they're going to disrupt a lot of people, a lot of teams uh, from now until the ACC tournament. And they might cause some teams to miss the NCAA tournament. And I'm looking forward to that. So shout out coach. Ham. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll echo that. Like they could have certainly gone out pretty, pretty poorly after, after some pretty bad losses to start this year. Um, some horribly blown leads, some blowouts against rivals, um, losing to some really bad programs. Like they, they could have certainly, uh, certainly kind of just thrown in the towel and said like, Hey, we're gonna have a repeat of last year. And they've, they've, they've done enough to be at least be respectable and make some games fun and go on a little bit of a winning streak in the ACC and make North Carolina sweat it out. And uh, I think they will be at least a fun team to kind of like cheer along for and root for yeah. the rest of the year. Um, Friday was four days since Kobe passed. So uh, I'll, I'll send my shout out up that way. So uh, still a crappy day uh, every year when it comes around, but, that's all I got to say about that So <laughs> before I get too emotional. So, all right, good luck on your bets today. Thanks for tuning in early. We'll see you guys again next, uh, next Sunday, probably back to our regular time, 6 o'clock. We'll talk to you guys soon. Go Noles.